Hello my YouTube chess friends, nice to see you again. Uh, it's been a while, busy with uh, the Fisher Random World Championship in Iceland, it was a lot of fun, exciting tournament, congrats to Hikaru. I had a blast doing the Icelandic uh, live TV commentary, five hours each day, a lot of work but I kind of want to do a video you know, on the tournament, my, my experience with the games and you know what I learned from it, but first this game caught my eye. Uh, and it looks like we have a new Chinese chess a prodigy. This little girl right here, Lu Miai. She is now rated well, I think like twenty three sixty, and that comes after a string of uh, pretty good results. And she's she's been playing a lot in Serbia, and she had a tournament in Serbia where she played against uh, opponents rated. On average 2270 which is unfortunately right now about my level after I lost 53 rating points but she scored 10 and a half out of 11 and that's pretty that's pretty amazing and then in the Serbian League she played the game we are about to look at which is pretty amazing pretty amazing let's have a look so Lu Miai, she's with white pieces, and she's playing against uh, another tongue twister from uh, Armenia, international master Lilith Amkritian, and she opens up with pawn to e4, which seems to be the way of these, you know, aggressive Chinese players, and we remember Wei Yi had a, a very nice game, for instance, in the Sicilian, so e4 seems to be the way for, for the aggressive young players. France defense. Has always been a staple in the repertoire of, of Armenian players. There's, there's even an Armenian variation in uh, one of the lines. D4 by white, D5, knight C3. And here, instead of bishop B4, which is the Vinegar variation, the one I like to play and where the Armenian variation lies. Actually, we can, if I can remember it, it's here, here, and now bishop A5. This is the so called Armenian variation. But in this game, uh, Lilith goes with knight to f6. We have the classical uh, French, e5, knight f to d7. And here, uh, a very rare move by, by the young Chinese girl. She plays the move queen g4. <coughs> now, this is known in, in some other variations of the French. And usually, when, when white does this, white will be gambiting this pawn on d4 once black captures it. And we'll try to. Uh, uh, what's what's the word? Overprotect, yeah. Nimsovic will try to overprotect the pawn on e5 and sort of play around the, this pawn on d4 and try to win it maybe later. So black plays c5, which is sort of the the French move here. You want to move this pawn before you move the knight, and now knight b5. And this has been seen in a well a handful of games, including games by the very aggressive uh, Ivan Ivan Ivanisevic from from Serbia, who has been well well. Very high rated in, in the mid 26, mid 2600s. So, okay, you know, if, if you want to search for interesting ideas, Ivanisevic is definitely one to, to look at. But here, why uh, the games of Ivanisevic, his opponents found c takes d4, which seems to be the best move. Here, Lilith from, from Armenia, she plays knight to c6. <clears throat> which is probably not as strong because. Now we kind of see White's idea. She plays knight to d6, and this was the idea with jumping with the knight to b5 and you know <clears throat> queen g4, trying to undermine this pawn. And White is able to do that. Black has to take, and now we take on g7. Rook f8. I mean, there's no other way to to save this rook except for king here. But then, well, bishop g5 should 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 be enough. So rook f8 and e takes d6. So White has won the bishop pair, but Black is probably going to win well a pawn or two. And in fact, on next move, black take this pawn on d4. And now there's a threat on the pawn on c2. So this looks kind of funky for white. I mean, if, if we're able to win this pawn here, and you know, just enjoy the nice center and castle, then we're doing quite well. But there is this move, knight to f3. <clears throat> and here it looks like even like black blunters, black plays knight takes c2, which at first glance looks critical, but it turns out it's very good for white. 
Instead, the best move is probably knight f5. Uh, I suspect that okay, knight takes f3 can be played, but I think white will uh, enjoy the time that black now lost, having played the knight now for the third time. We will have the bishop pair, we'll castle very quickly, we'll get some nice compensation, and even win this pawn, and then this pawn can be very dangerous. Just uh, you know, at a first glance. So knight f5 looks like the move to play, and something like this when we try to trap the queen. So the queen has to go back, and uh, well, the game goes on. Black will win this pawn on d6. White has the bishop pair. Black has a center. It's an interesting game, but this looks actually <coughs> lost for black. And the combination of you know playing this queen g4 move and then knight b5 suggests to me that this has to be has to be you know somewhat prepared, which takes slightly away from uh, sort of the. The shock value of the game. If this was found over the board, it would be much more, more, uh, much more. Uh, I don't know, impressive in a way. But you know, not to take anything or much away. It's still a very impressive game. So King D1. We simply kill this rook on A1. And this looks. At first glance, when I looked at the game first time, I was like, "What? Can you can you really do that?" Bishop B5 she played. And there's a pin here. But it turns out black can hardly move anything. In the game, queen b6 was played. Let's see a move like a6. Just trying to, you know, resolve matters as quickly as possible. But then all of white's pieces come into the game. With gain of time, bishop g5, hitting the queen. And queen b6, we'll see later why moving the queen is not working. If you play a move like f6, trying to block, blunt the bishop, rook e1. You can't allow this because it's, it's kind of a, an epaulette mate. <coughs> so we play, try to play e5, but there's just pins everywhere. The knight is pinned, the pawn is pinned, and now we opened up the rook towards the king. It's just game over. So instead, black tried to win the pawn on d6, play queen b6. Again, it, it's attacking the bishop, so it looks like we have to move the bishop, but rook e1 is another tempo move. Black took on d6, but we, of course, we can't do this on account of rook takes e6. Immediate capture is just made, and other moves. Well, are probably not going to work. Bishop g5 should should be enough here. If f6, queen e7 is made, and something like this, we can probably just give some kind of mate, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> so, queen takes d6. But then another piece comes into the game. And yet again, we have to ask ourselves, what, you know, what happens if we just try to resolve the tension with a6? Black found out she can't do that, she played b6 instead. But if she plays a6, queen f6 simply. And there's no stopping this mate, because this is pinned, this is blocked. And you can't, you know, if you move the queen to defend this mate, you uh, you fall victim to this mate. So black's pieces just, just don't work at all here. But okay, b6 at least stops this threat. If, if white now plays queen f6, black can play bishop to a6, which defends this square. And now the queen is actually attacked. So black is better there. So white instead found the move 95. Turns out this is one of the rare uh, moves in the game after the opening where white didn't find the best move. The best move is actually knight to h4. And again, I think it's best to demonstrate why it's good by looking at this a6 move because black really can't do much else. There's gonna be queen f6, mate is threatened, and if we try to defend it, now we see the point of knight h4, it's knight f5. Take lose the queen, and if not, it's made here. It's too much. Just too much. It's just too much. So 95. Not the best move, but still a great move. And in the game, black played f6. She realized that if a6, then white will play knight takes f7. And we'll see a similar idea in the game. After f6, bishop takes f6, black played a6, and this doesn't change much. Except now knight f7 doesn't really capture anything, but it has the same effect. Knight f7. And, well, the queen can't move because then you lose control of this pawn. So all that remains is to take the knight. Rook takes f7, but then there's simply queen g8. And Lilith McRitchian resigned. There's not much to do here. You can interpose the queen or the rook. In both cases, you... Uh, you will end up lost here after rook takes e6. There's no square for the king even. So you'd have to allow this mate. 
right here, or you could interpose with the queen. But then the same thing. You can't do anything, and you have to you have to get mated here actually. And here we can well, there's a cocktail of available mates. We can mate in one, or we can do this, and then this. You know, this con conglomeration of pieces on the F file is quite nice. So yeah, quite quite the impressive game and definitely a name to remember although it's hard to pronounce but hopefully soon we'll all learn about this prodigy from china well at least i did and uh well we'll see what he does in the future i'm sure we'll, we'll hear more about that uh pretty soon thanks <laughs> bye bye